Hey everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful week and that your autumn so far has been uh, a good one. Um, it's beautiful outside today, one of these warm, unseasonably warm fall days. Uh, I don't think we'll get too many more of them, but I'm, I'm enjoying the heck out of it right now looking out the window. Uh, and these changing leaves always make me think of uh, my daughter's birthday. We had a great birthday weekend this past week, and actually on Friday night she helped me lead services a little bit, and she did a great job. I really enjoyed doing that with her. Um, but yeah, every time I see the leaves change, I think back to that memory when she was born, driving in a badly driven cab uh, down the west side of, uh, or really up the west side of Manhattan uh, along the Hudson, uh, just seeing the leaves in a brilliant display uh, and just being a terrified new father with my uh, my infant daughter in the back seat of this uh, badly driven cab. Um, yeah. So today I wanted to share with you um, a setting that I kind of came up with. Uh, none of the content is original, but combining them in the way that I am is a little bit original, so I'll take some slight credit for that. Of uh, The prayer Adon Olam. Uh, so the prayer Adon Olam, uh, of all the prayers in our services, probably gets the most out there and fun musical treatments. Uh, my friend uh, Cantor Ozzy Schwartz famously said it to the tune of You'll Be Back from Hamilton. Uh, and just today, for example, I saw a recording of my good friend uh, Rabbi Daniel Bogard uh, singing it to the tune of I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For by U2. Uh, so why does Adon Olam get so many fun and left-field musical treatments? Um, I think that there are a couple reasons why, and I want to share them with you. One is that the words tend to be well-known, making it easier to add a surprising tune. Um, another big reason is that it tends to be located at the conclusion of our service, and as a devotional hymn, rather than as part of the service required by Jewish law, it's a great moment to have some fun. Uh, people tend to be putting away their prayer shawls and greeting one another at that moment uh, as formal feelings. Any formal feelings there are under the service tend to dissipate, and people turn to one another uh, with goodwill and, and to the day ahead. Uh, another reason is its meter. So Adon Olam, which is at least a thousand years old, follows a meter made popular in medieval Arabic poetry, which works in multiple metric patterns, giving it something like the metric version of supersymmetry. What I mean by that is you can recite it as Adon Olam Asher Malach Beterem Kol Yetzir Nivra, or as Adon Olam Asher Malach Beterem Kol Yetzir Nivra, or uh, for that matter, as Adon Olam Asher Malach Beterem Kol Yetzir Nivra, or as Adon Olam Asher Malach Beterem Kol Yetzir Nivra, the Edna Saba Hefto Kol. So, because it works metrically in so many different ways, meaning you could set it to all sorts of different melodies and meters, and it will work on a gut level. Uh, in fact, the tradition of setting our medieval poems to the tunes of popular secular music in services goes all the way back to the time that these medieval poems were written. So, from a scholarly perspective, uh, singing Adon Olam to Tom Petty's Learning to Fly is just as legitimate as singing it to the tune that you learned in Hebrew school. Uh, however, I think that the words of Adon Olam have tremendous power and address a healing and very important spiritual need uh, and thought with a directness and a beauty that I want to remind myself of, since we are somewhat in the habit of employing the poem as a blank musical canvas. And so when I first got the idea to use the tune of one of the classic child ballads, uh, some of the very first English ballads to be recorded. For me, it was like being struck by lightning because um, I think the ballad perfectly frames and uplifts the intermingling of intimacy and grandeur of the poem. And uh, and it frames it's the poem's ability to inspire us to raise the sparks of our own awe of God and our intimate connection with God as well. Uh, the first three verses of Adon Olam are a reflection on God's magnitude. Beyond time, beyond space, beli reshit, beli tachlit, without beginning, without end. But the last two verses are both covenantal and very personal. Vehu eli, vechai goali, God is my God, 
my life, my redeemer, my refuge. I entrust my spirit and body in God's hand. Just as an infant that lies in the arms of its mother. So without further ado, here is Adon Olam to the tune of Willie O'Winsbury, among the earliest recorded English traditional ballads. And this instru instrumentation is by uh, the great John Renburn, who you may know from the group Pentangle that uh, played a lot of traditional um, Irish and English music with kind of a psychedelic edge back in the 70s, but who is also uh, a legitimate uh, heavyweight when it comes to uh, traditional uh, English and Irish music. So it's like... <laughs> Adonai Lee 